right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is part one of the respiratory system. Uh, really, this first part is just looking at uh, the pathway that air takes and some of the reasonings why we do that. Okay, so the big picture, why do we breathe? The main thing, and I'm, hopefully this is a better pen color for you guys to stay in background. Uh, the reason why we breathe is... We talked about this beginning of the year. Why do we breathe and why do we eat? Is to bring in nutrients in order for our cells to survive. Uh, we need oxygen in our cells because what they, what the oxygen is used for, as we know, is cellular respiration, uh, which leads us to produce uh, ATP, which we use as an energy source. The other thing that we need is a byproduct of cellular respiration is CO2, and we need to get rid of the waste. Okay, so the whole point of breathing is that gas exchange. Uh, the big function or the big uh, picture for us is we're going to be looking at the structure, so what's everything made up of, and then as a result, what is their functions. Okay, a little picture of cellular respiration. So the, we have a couple or a few different types of respiration. We have internal, external, and cellular respiration. I'll start with cellular respiration first because we've seen this before. Okay, so this is where we have oxygen and glucose, and it breaks down to CO2 and water. And these two uh, waste products we're going to be looking at in depth in their part three video, and then ATP. Uh, all that's happening here with the external, what happens is air comes into the lungs, and it's the gas exchange that occurs uh, between the lungs. More specifically, it's called the alveoli of the lungs and the capillaries of the blood system. Okay. So it's getting that air from our lungs into our blood. And then it'll travel through the blood and, and take it to where it needs to go, which is our cells, and that's where internal respiration takes place. And this is, again, gas exchange. But this is the gas exchange between uh, the capillaries of the blood and the cells. So between capillaries and the cells. Okay, Because we need to get that oxygen into our cell, we need to get that carbon dioxide and water out of there. Okay, so you can pause that and get that down. So here's a picture. You guys have the same one in your notes, so you might want to pause it here and just fill in the blanks so you can see all the major uh, things that we need to know. I can just basically copy them down here. Epiglottis, larynx, trunk. So make sure you know those ones. Don't have to know those ones. Base lungs, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so we'll be getting into a little bit of the structure right now. So the, the nasal and oral cavity we have a couple functions. So we have cleaning, warming, and moistening. So in order to clean, we have mucus, which causes uh, bacteria, dust, debris to stick. And then we have cilia, which are these little micro hairs, and this causes it to be uh, swept. So the, it sticks to the mucus and it's swept away and protected by our cilia. And same thing, mucus is going to also warm it. Oops, sorry, not mucus. We have uh, capillaries in there. So that blood flow is going to call it, oops, so these are small little blood vessels. Causes it to warm up that area. And then also it allows it to be moistened so it doesn't dry out and crack. And this is due to our mucus as well. Okay. So you can pause that and get it down. So the next one is we have is the pharynx. So this is the the space between. So it's basically the, the nasal cavity and the larynx. So oops, sorry, between nasal cavity and the larynx. Uh, we another way, thing that we call this is the throat. And it contains the tonsils, which is basically lymph lymphatic tissue. And we'll talk about what the lymph is a little bit later. It's in just another transport system similar to what our blood does. It takes nutrients and waste away. And it protects against pathogens. So you might have heard, you know, when the doctor, uh, when you go to the doctor because you're sick and he kind of touches your throat. And the reason why he does that is because he's wanting to see if these uh, lymph nodes are swollen. Because what they do is they protect against pathogens. And if there's an infection, these will be swollen. Okay, and this is basically uh, an area where both food 
and air pass through. Okay, so you can pause that. So the next one we have is the glottis. This is just the opening to the larynx. Okay, it looks pretty nasty. Those are your vocal cords in here. So let's move on to the larynx. So this is where you have your vocal cords, and we'll see if this one plays right away. So you can see the vocal cords vibrating. This is what's creating the sound with air. Okay, so now we actually have our what we call our windpipe. This is the trachea. Uh, it, there's little there's cartilage rings around it. Cartilage rings. As you can feel, if you feel the front of your throat, you can feel all the cartilage rings going down. Uh, in here, there's also mucus and cilia. And again, the mucus traps any debris, and the cilia sweeps it away. It actually sweeps it up the throat, or up the trachea, uh, into the oral cavity where we swallow it. It's kind of gross, but that's what we do. Okay, so you can pause that and get it down if you like. Just a quick little thing too, like here's an example of the ciliated cells. Goblet cells are the specialized cells that produce the mucus. Bronchi is the first branch. Oops, sorry. Bronchi is the first branch. Singular, we call it a bronchus. Okay. Uh, and bronchus is the paired tubes uh, to the lungs. And then they branch into secondary. Let's put this to degree there. Into secondary bronchi. Like these. Before it branches into the next thing. Okay. Pause that and get it down. And then further branching into. Into bronchioles. Okay. And all of these ones will have mucus and cilia as well. And they get uh, smaller and smaller. It's similar to what a tree looks like. You have your big branches, and then you have your smaller ones, and your smaller ones after that. Really, it doesn't look anything like that tree, but like a normal tree, like when people can draw. So finally, alveoli. And this is a big ticket item for us. Because, oh sorry, so what you can see here is they look like clusters of grapes. So this was your bronchiole, and then it branches off into these uh, alveoli, these little grape-like looking things. And as you can see, there's capillaries surrounding them. So this is the oxygenated blood coming in, deoxygenated blood coming out, uh, and this is where the, gas, the, the external gas exchange occurs. So let's look at the structure and function of these alveoli. Okay, so this is a big ticket item from this. We're going to ask you what the structure is and what the function. So when you see these grape clusters, the reason why they're grape clusters, there's lots of them, so it increases the surface area. So for optimal uh, gas exchange. They're thin-walled, also for optimal gas exchange. It's easy to fit through. Dense with capillaries, same thing, so it brings... Uh, lots of gas in and out or to the area. Uh, walls with lined with pul uh, pulmonary surfactant. Uh, this basically allows for a decrease in uh, and reduces the surface tension. Uh, moist walls, same thing for uh, increased gas exchange. Or diffusion rates and finally strep receptors will indicate when it's full so it will not allow uh, overfilling so prevents overfilling okay so that should wrap it up uh, just in summary just make sure that we know uh, the main parts of everything and what the overall function is so overall, so just make sure you know the overall function of the respiratory system and also the major structures 
of each part and the functions. Have a wonderful night.